Hey guys, it's Jesse here with another video for you. Today we're going to talk about John Meehan, also known as Dirty John, whose story has become an obsession of mine, as well as many millions of people around the world. If you're not familiar with him, go to Netflix and look it up. There's a new series called Dirty John, which is based on a podcast which was downloaded by millions of people. The podcast relating the tragedy that followed his last relationship with Deborah Newell was such a huge success that has fascinated as many people as possible, but also stirring negative comments and misunderstanding on how someone could be so stupid to fall prey to a man like that. Well, what most people tend to forget is that John Meehan was, in a nutshell, an incredible con man. His only talent was probably his charm and wit that, together with a knife for the right victim, managed to scam several women throughout his life, leading up to his own death. There was also a documentary called Dirty John, The Dirty Truth, which is the reason I am making this video. The documentary is also available on Netflix, and in the film, several people are interviewed, including some of the women who fell for him. While the documentary and series focus mainly on the two main relationships lived by John, another woman is briefly mentioned as well as interviewed who happens to be, according to herself, misrepresented by the media. That woman is Marilady Anderson. Marilady Anderson is a Brazilian woman portrayed as a famous millionaire writer who John Meehan tried to scam out of millions of dollars. And since the documentary was aired, Marilady has been receiving hundreds of emails asking how many millions she actually lost during her brief encounter with John. Well, the truth is that Marilady is not famous, let alone a millionaire. Why the media has turned a simple woman into an exciting target beats the hell out of her. Feeling the pressure of a fake representation, Marilady decided to post a couple of short videos in Portuguese on Instagram relating the real truth about what happened between her and John Meehan. And after watching her version of the story, I sent her an email asking her permission to make this video so I could share it with all of you. She was kind enough to reply saying she was okay with it. So everything you will hear in this video is her own version of the short relationship no one is talking about. Are you ready? So sit down, grab your favorite drink, and let's dig into the story of how Mary Lade Anderson became a victim before Dirty John met Deborah Newell. In October 2012, Marilady was admitted into a San Diego hospital to undergo a second brain surgery. Um, the first operation happened in her home country, Brazil. During that time, she was also going through a painful divorce, which uh, contributed to a moment of vulnerability that made her a perfect victim for a person like Dirty John or John Meehan. She says that the, the next day after the surgery, uh, she woke up from a deep sleep uh, to find John standing next to her bed. He was dressed in scrubs, uh, quite handsome, posing at her, as her uh, anesthesiologist. According to her, uh, John was carrying a patient, asking how she was doing, uh, Marilage was still under the effects of anesthesia, so she could not really keep a conversation. Um, so she says that John left his uh, private phone number on the bedside table. And that was the very first contact that she had uh, with John Meehan. A week later, Marilady went back to the hospital to uh, remove the stitches. But uh, somehow, she didn't even think about John. And it wasn't until um, around um, January 2013 when she called the hospital for a, um, a second appoint appointment. Uh, but unfortunately, the uh, hospital was unable to schedule her on the date that she wanted. Uh, so she got a little bit frustrated. Uh, and at that time, Marilade was already living in Laguna Niguel in Orange County. So, uh, frustrated with the fact uh, that the hospital couldn't help her in that case, she remembered that John had given her uh, his phone number. And since he uh, worked in a hospital 
uh, well, she thought that maybe he would be able to uh, help her in that sense. So she called him and he, yeah, he was more than happy to hear back from her. So he got him her phone number and things started to roll. Two or three weeks later, John called uh, checking up on her. Again, he was um, courteous, interested, which made her feel special because um, after going through a heavy surgery and in the process of a divorce, uh, Muddy Lady was uh, feeling lonely, uh, vulnerable, uh, not very desirable. Uh, she had gained a few pounds because of the treatment and her self-esteem was, yeah, was quite low. So John became uh, suddenly the one person she needed to boost her confidence. After all, he was tall, handsome, and a successful doctor as he presented himself. Muddy Lady felt as if she, <laughs> she had hit the jackpot. Uh, so uh, they went out on a friendly date, uh, marking the beginning of her bad experience to be. Um, Emails uh, followed and a relationship started brewing. The one thing that kept nagging her was the fact that every time they were together, John would ask uh, about her ex-husband, um, his company, her job, and most importantly, how much money she usually made. Well, um, if you think about that, to most people, um, this may sound like a huge red flag, but to Muddy Lady, uh, still infatuated with the handsome and successful doctor, <laughs> again, those questions were simply something annoying. On the other hand, it seemed like John wanted to help her with the um, divorce papers, and uh, she needed someone by her side. But he would constantly ask about the divorce process, how much money there was to split between her and her ex. Um, he gave her ideas of how to get the money safe after the divorce, blah, blah, blah. Uh, he even suggested she deposit her part of the cash into his own bank account to protect it from her ex. Hmm. The conversation was always the same, um, even, uh, even though she tried to avoid the subject of money, uh, the relationship continued and by now they were already starting to get uh, intimate. He used to run every morning, something that helped her to lose some pounds, uh, they ate healthy, it was quite pleasant being around him. But aside from the repetitive talks about money, uh, Muddy Lady noticed that John never seemed to have a dedicated place to work. Usually dressed in scrubs, he pretended to be always on duty, and regardless of where they were, the hospital nearby was often the place he went to work. Muddy Lady found that quite strange, but somehow I let it go because um, According to her, he always had the perfect answer for everything she would ask. As the relationship progressed, uh, John noticed that Muddy Lady uh, didn't give much um, information on her financial situation. So he, according to her, he started to reduce his visits to her house, although they still met every now and then. On uh, one occasion, John decided to introduce a doctor friend to Muddy Lady's girlfriend by proposing a double date. Um, so they were both excited. However, the date never happened because uh, John called it off uh, the last minute, um, saying he and his doctor friend were summoned to work a night shift at a uh, Hog Hospital in Newport. Muddy Lady's girlfriend was curious about her new date, so she decided to call the hospital to say hello. But to her surprise, she was told there was no John Meehan working there, neither his doctor friend. So she discussed that with Muddy Lady, and Muddy Lady then realized something was definitely wrong. Even though she brushed the idea off and let it go uh, yet again. I 
think that when you're in such a situation, those red flags don't always make you see the reality. Sometimes what you, um, yeah, sometimes what you believe is stronger than what is really happening. Weeks passed and Marilady got some invitations for a dinner in Hollywood. She called John to ask him to accompany her to to which he replied with enthusiasm. He needed to work, so Marilady went first and waited for him at the hotel. Uh, later, uh, he arrived badly dressed, carrying a backpack like a teenager instead of a, a briefcase, a proper briefcase for a doctor. Uh, he also wore a soccer team a worn out jacket, almost in ranks. Uh, Muddy Lady was a little shocked, so she asked him um, why would he wear something like that in a five-star hotel. His response uh, was uh, that the jacket uh, belonged to his father, whose birthday happened to be on that same day. Mm. Yeah, right. <laughs> and that was the uh, only memory he still had from the old man. So. Marilade felt bad again and apologized. As we spoke before, uh, he always had the perfect answer for everything. But that night, John was exhausted. He skipped shower and uh, took off his clothes and uh, fell into bed. Uh, Marilady found strange to see him lying there um, as if in a sudden coma. Uh, her, but her only thought was that John uh, must have worked too hard and needed some rest. But as she started running the red fla flags in her mind, uh, Marilady decided to uh, look for more signs that of things that didn't add up. So uh, while he was sleeping, uh, she went through his bag, which was rather heavy. Um, inside uh, the backpack, she found thick uh, rows of dollar bills to what he later claimed to be from clients he operated on and uh, uh, who tried to avoid taxes by paying him in cash. There were also two guns, uh, which was his personal way of protection, and uh, several packs of medicine with his uh, name on. His explanation to everything didn't quite convince her, so for the very first time, Marie Lady decided to act on her suspicions. So she asked her friend for help and they uh, looked for information on the internet where they came across a website with a list of scammers and psychopaths. And to their uh, surprise, uh, there were comments from different women who uh, mentioned uh, John's name as being a liar not a doctor and someone to watch out for. They also found a picture of him with a note saying he had been arrested in Ohio once. Uh, mentioned, there was mention of his brother's death by overdose and so on. Um, but the lady was clearly shaken and uncomfortable with all that evidence and uh, let her emotions take over. Uh, so she immediately sent him an email disclosing the information about his not being a doctor, about that information being a lie. Uh, John replied immediately with copies of his uh, several certificates where uh, his name was printed on, trying to convince her they were real, they were legit. He probably noticed that things were getting complicated. Uh, in everything else, every other evidence was, according to him, just a misunderstanding. But things started to get uh, a little bit worse, uh, because one day Marie Lady came back from work to find the door of her house slightly opened. Uh, she got in and saw lots of sheets of writing paper from a project uh, she was working on scattered all over the, the room, all over the floor. Uh, on the inside of the door, uh, she found the ripped off page of her own passport with a message uh, saying, a message that said, we need to talk. The room was a mess, uh, things on the floor as if a burglar had just been there. 
um, some of her valuables like a jewelry, watches, a documents, and um, even, even some precious stones she'd bought in Brazil were all gone. Everything was gone. Uh, she knew right away that John was behind all that. So that day, Muddy Lady took the first step against John. She, um, she got in the car and drove down to the police station. She reported the uh, break-in, as well as the strange relationship she was uh, living at the moment. It wasn't until she mentioned John's name that the uh, police uh, looked at each other as if something was familiar about it. Marilady noticed their reaction and asked if they knew something she, she didn't. The police told her they could not confirm anything, but they advised her to stay away from him until further notice. But Lady had no idea how to avoid him because he could show up at any moment. So according to Muddy Lady, the police asked her to uh, dial his number. And uh, when he answered, the police uh, explained to John he was not supposed to contact Muddy Lady from that moment on. John's immediate response was that they could not demand anything from him without a, a restraining order, which made sense. So from that day on, the police assigned two cars to check up on her house twice a day, so she would feel a little bit safer. However, Marie Lady always felt like John was stalking her, no matter what. She claims he continuously followed her car while uh, wearing a blonde wig and uh, left uh, threatening messages on her voicemail. She called the police several times to report him and uh, his threats until one day she decided to confront him by calling his number. Uh, she asked him straightforward why was he stalking her to what he replied that she had been sending the police after him without any reason and he was also he also claimed that he had been sick in the hospital and she shouldn't do that to him um, again um, my lady felt sorry and confused she even called the police wondering if the uh, if she might be exaggerating but the police, of course, uh, said, of course, said, no, you're not exaggerating, you, uh, that she should remain cautious. They just needed some more evidence to be able to stop him. And that's when she came up with a plan. Um, she invited John to go on a trip with her to Brazil, where uh, she pretended to have some money that needed to be transferred to the States. And um, he got excited and said yes. Then she asked him to send a copy of his passport as well as his bank account because he, she wanted more, some more information, personal information of him. And according to her, he did. Uh, her plan was to transfer the money to his account to avoid complications uh, for her. Um, Marie Lady also claims the police came up with another idea. They uh, asked her to meet John at a Starbucks uh, to anticipate some cash while they, they'd be undercover waiting for him. Uh, money was probably what he was interested in, so there she went, uh, ready to help the police. Unfortunately, the plan failed. Uh, after a while in the cafe, she got a call from John saying he was not an idiot to come meet her. He knew there were cops there waiting for him. Uh, <laughs> Marie Lady tried to convince him otherwise, but he kind of described the cops. Uh, one by one, as if he uh, knew them already. Uh, he had probably passed by the cafe and, and saw the trap. By now, Marilady had officially become his enemy. The threats went on and Marilady got really, really scared. Uh, but fortunately, after some more investigation, the uh, police found enough evidence to finally arrest him 
putting an end to her ordeal. Marileide claims that she still felt unsafe in the U.S., so she decided to go to Brazil, go back to Brazil for a while, uh, following the suggestion of a, a social worker that helped women in domestic violence cases. Um, she wasn't sure how long John would be detained, fearing he might come looking for her in case he got out. What happened next is what the series is uh, depicting. He's coming out of jail and meeting Deborah Newell, who was to become his last victim before John's violent death. Nenhuma hora falei que eu era escritora famosa, que eu era uma multimilionária, sabe, como está aparecendo a entrevista. Isso está me constrangindo muito, porque estão é, é, denegrindo a minha imagem, estão me colocando como se eu fosse uma pessoa que eu não sou. Isso é porque querem ganhar ibope. Querem botar o John Merham, porque era um cara que dava golpe nas mulheres. Realmente ele fazia isso. E por isso que eu tive que fazer esta invenção, que eu era uma pessoa que tinha dinheiro, que eu ia buscar dinheiro para ele, precisava do passaporte, porque eu precisava do nome dele completo, gente. Então, assim, isso está sendo chato, porque envolve família, envolve parentes, envolve amigos, que sabem que eu não sou essa milionária. Gente, se eu fosse milionária ou multimilionária, como estão dizendo, eu mesmo faria os filmes que eu tenho. Tenho três projetos maravilhosos que estão no meu site. Sou escritora, sim. Sou autora, porque tenho autoria de três projetos. tá Mas financiamento, dinheiro, patrocínio, eu não tenho nada disso. Eu corro atrás, sou uma pessoa normal. Eu vivi perseguição todos os dias, de madrugada, de noite, eu dormia com faca, que eu não tinha revólver. Eu tinha que dormir com uma faca para me proteger. Esta foi a realidade. Eu espero que ela seja dita e não confundida. So, as you guys could see, Marileide's version of what went through between her and John has not been taken into consideration, probably because the media was looking for a more extreme story to tell. Her almost three months experience was bad, the threats, the persecution, all that caught her traumatized. But the fact that he was arrested and she was safe didn't get much attention. After all, John had a long history with the police, he'd been doing that quite often. But the misrepresentation of Marileide's profile has caused her some grief because her words were twisted during the interview she gave for the documentary. Marileide claims to never having said she was a millionaire because that is not true. The story about the money was an invention to lure John into a trap to help the police. She is an aspiring writer, but far from famous. As I explained before, everything you heard in this video was related by Money Lady herself. I'm just passing it on to you. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Have a fabulous day. Bye!